We've made it over two months. This is week nine of our study in Romans. I want to invite you go back to June the 21st of 2021. Don't go back to the beginning of this study, but go back to June 21st of 2021 and start that in him scripture study with us and then come through Romans. Just Come completely through that study and into this study we're at today and find out who God says you are, who God's Word says you are, what God's Word says you can stand in and believe in in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It, it thrills me to be able to look back over the months that we have went through this, this study and see people's lives change. I'm talking about in the jail. We're still in it in the jail. Uh, We've been shut down so much in in COVID in the jail that that we're still in that in him scripture study in there. So people are still hearing it. There's and we're just going to continue on presenting the gospel, the word of God to people and 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 urging them to find out who God says they are. That's something that we all need to do. Past salvation, I'm talking about after being born again, it, I am convinced the most important thing that you can do in your life is to get in God's Word and find out who He says you are and the strength that He says you have in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. There's something about knowing that that go, what God has written down for you to live in you can live in it, and there's a, there's a, there's a strength there that will bring us all to a place in our lives that we can walk tall and stand and reign in life as we're supposed to reign as children of God, as as heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Go to our, go back to June the twenty first. Download our our, uh, podcast app or go to the website. It's the dash prodigal son and and download these these podcasts. Go back. There's 41 weeks of of uh, in him scripture study on uh, that. There's 41 weeks of that. And now we're up. This is the ninth week of our study in Romans. And honey, it's rich. It is rich in who God says you are in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Find that out. Stand in that strength and 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 be a light in this world that God can use, that God can speak through today. My prayers for the world that we live in come out of Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. You know, Paul wanted the Ephesians to know and understand the love that God had for them. And that is my desire for the world that we live in today, every living person that walks the face of this planet, that they would come to know and understand the depth and the height and the width of God's love, just how much he cares for them, just how much he wants to help them through life. This is something that has been so real to me in the the last few years. It's just, uh, that's the reason I desire to do these prayers, and these prayers may seem monotonous, but believe me, they're not. They're here for you. They're uh, they're in their notes, and and if you'll read through them as we as we pray these prayers, you'll come to understand what Paul was saying to the Ephesians, and you'll be able to apply it and that to your life. Ephesians one fifteen says, "Ever since I first heard." of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere. I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. 
This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ. Though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that he opens my eyes to that love more and more every day. You say, well, how? How does he do that? He does that through his word. He does that through me coming to the realization that I can count on him through the promises that he has written down for each and every one of us to abide in and to believe and, and receive for ourselves. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Help me be the light and the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. I'm going to be in the last verse of Romans 5 today, Romans 5 and 21. And I'm going to go ahead and do uh, the uh, in him scriptures, not the in him scriptures, but the uh, the other translations of this, this verse. I want to do the New Living and the Amplified. It says that as sin hath reigned unto death, so even might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Now the the uh, New Living Translation says, So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Boy, that's good. And the Amplified Classic says, So that just as sin has reigned in death, so grace his unearned and undeserved favor might reign also through Jesus, through righteousness, right standing with God, which issue, which issues in eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, our Lord. I want to go back and I want to give you something today. Righteousness unto eternal life. How is that? It comes straight through God's grace, God's mercy, and God's goodness. You see, we we look back, and I well, I look back over my life, and I can see. You know, you've heard the old saying that uh, hindsight's twenty twenty. You know, you can see everything really clear when you're looking back at it, and you've already already went through it. But when, when this was talking about Romans 5 and 21, it says, Thus as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might, might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. When I look back over my life, I can see where God's grace has worked. I'm being worked overtime in my life. I can see where God has kept me 
for, through a lot of things that I was just just acting ignorant over. And, and it was my own fault. It was through religion that I walked away from 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 him and from a relationship with him. I really never really walked away from him. I prayed just about every day, but it was I mean, I was just I was just away from him doing things that I should have never done and but I in in my mind and in really in my heart, I I had no hope in the religion that I was living in. And, you know, I, I was just, you know, going through the motions and and uh feeling bad about myself and all the things that I was living in. And when I look back at that, I can see so clearly how God was standing there saying, son, just turn around here. Look at me. Look, come to me. Let me love you. And I was, you know, I had let religion convince me that he was a tyrant, that he was unpleasable because I'd seen so many unpleasable people in my life. I'm going to tell you something. Just like I said yesterday, God's grace is far bigger than man's sin. And you may have done things in your life that you're not proud of, that you that you think God will never forgive you for. But I'm going to assure, assure you of something. God, God will forgive you far quicker than man ever will. And, and if you walk in who you are in Jesus Christ, there ain't nothing can stop you from, from accomplishing what he has told you to accomplish. See, there's, there's millions out here that they want to, to live a Christian life. They don't know how. They think they've got to get straightened up. They've got to, you know, they've got to get their heart right. I've heard that over and over in my life. And yes, I understand what that what what people are meaning and saying when they say that. But I'm gonna tell you something: your heart will never be right until you give it to God, until you invite Him in, and say, "You take my life and do with it what you would have have done with it." And when you and when when you invite Him in, and then you allow His Word to minister to you. And, 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 and you come to know and find out just how much God's for you, just how much he loves you and that he's made you righteous. You've been made righteous through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And you can walk in those truths. See, I didn't, I didn't walk in those truths for a lot of years. I scratch my head and think there's got to be more to a Christian life than what I'm seeing and what I'm, I'm being told and what I'm living, you know, I was taught, well, you go to church, you read your Bible, and you do the best you know how. And, 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 and if you mess up, well, you grovel at God's feet and you beg him to forgive you. And sooner or later, maybe six months down the road, he, he will. That ain't God. That's just religion. That's just it in a nutshell. No, God wants us to understand and to know that without a shadow of a doubt, he's always there. He's always there. I want to go to a scripture, and it's in Revelation. This will do a lot of people that are born again, that have really messed up. This will do them a lot of good if you read it for what it is. And it's Revelation 3 and 20. This is Jesus talking to the churches. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in unto him and sup with him and he with me. Jesus was standing on the door at the door of these churches. And, and this, this scripture is for all the people that think they've done too much, think they've messed up over and over and over again and God's got tired of dealing with them. This is just a perfect example that he's not. He's, he's not got, got tired of dealing with you. He knows that people make mistakes. He knows we are human beings and we sin. We have, we have problems and, and we mess up from time to time. 
But Revelation 3 and 20 says, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He said, If any man will just open the door, he said, I'll come in and I will fellowship with him. God wants to fellowship with us. He wants to be just as close to us as we can we can uh, allow him to or will allow him to. But you've got to first come to the understanding that what he has made of, of what he has made you to be in your salvation. And that is that just like the, the this scripture talks about righteousness unto eternal life. It's not your righteousness, it's his righteousness that he has made you to be. You see what I'm saying? Second Corinthians Corinthians five and twenty one says this. It says, He, who is he? God made him, who is him? Jesus, to be sin for us, so that we might be the righteousness of God in him. Do you understand that? That you are the righteousness of God in him. And that righteousness is unto eternal life through the sacrifice that is made in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. When he died on the cross for us, that done it. That paid the price. That paid it in full. Your fines have been paid. Your, 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 uh, your shortcomings have been paid for. And if you'll understand that and come to the knowledge and the realization of j- j- just how much God's grace is working for on your behalf, honey, you, like I said, you can look back over your life and see where God has worked, see where God has pulled you out of the ditch, and see where where He has just He has just went far over and above the call of duty to help you and strengthen you. And he will continue to do that because we'll always, we'll always mess up. Romans 3 and 23. I, I mean, I have to go, I'll go back to this a lot. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But for Romans 3 and 24 says, at, listen, we've been freely justified by God's grace through it, through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Freely justified by God's grace that is in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The redemption that he paid for us to have. Stand in that. Believe that. Believe you are what God says you are. Who God says you are. And that you can stand and strong in that. That's what this whole, this whole study's been about. is just teaching you who you are and who you can be in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Know that. Understand that. Realize that. And he will help you. He will strengthen you. He will lift you up and and take you places that you thought you'd never go. Oh, I thank God for those truths today. Now, listen, if you've you've, uh, been listening to this podcast but you've never made Jesus Lord of your life. You don't know what it's like to receive the grace that God has for us. I I want you to understand something. Being born again is one of the easiest things in the world to do. Jesus, Jesus wants to save you. Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says, thou shalt be saved. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be saved. Won't you do that today? Won't you give Jesus Christ your heart and your life and let him teach you, let him teach you through his word just who he has made you to be? Because if you'll come to know and understand who he has made you to be and leave the religion out of it, just believe and understand what God has made you to be, then you can come to know and realize just how much he cares for you. He loves you today. 
Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. Uh, confess him as Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you shall be saved. Glory to God. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today, and watch him change your life forever. Hey, I'm so glad that you have listened to this podcast. Now, I want to encourage you, go to our website, get in touch with us. If you've got a prayer request, send me that prayer request. I want to send you God's word concerning that prayer request. If you've been born again, listen to this podcast, listen, send me your testimony. I want to hear what God's doing in your life. I want to hear what you need him to do in your life. Go to our website. There's all kinds of resources there. That, that are free of charge, that don't cost you anything. Anywhere on this podcast, if, if you need something from God, we will make sure that you can get what you need out, out of God's Word when it comes to this. But what, That's the reason we do this podcast, is to see, see people strengthened and, and given hope through the truth that is in God's Word. Go to our website. It's the dash prodigalson.com. Now listen, if you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you. Thank you so much for all that you do sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to give his word away free of charge to anybody that will listen. I'm telling you, anybody that wants to hear God's word, they can have it free, and that's because of partners like you. Partners, thank you. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today, a hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.